I believe you can see my screen now. It's very good. Everything okay. is sharp. So okay. uh... perfect. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I will uh, I will uh, give you a short introduction about uh, parametrics. Uh, maybe what it is, what it should be, and what it should not be. Um, so there is a revolution going on, um, and um, uh, we've been saying it for a while, uh, me and Martin and others, that there is a parametric revolution. Um, so we'll see if it's actually going to happen. Um, you will be all doing things like this. You see some spaghetti on the right side, uh, and then something else is happening on the left side. Uh, what is actually happening here, uh, and why are we doing it? That's the content of the lecture. So the first part will be um, an introduction. What is parametric modeling? Is it a style? Is it a tool? Is it a method? And then the second part will be uh, example from our office. So the R club bridges, a bar, and then possibly a church. We'll see how much time I will be using and then how, how much time you want to spend on actually watching this. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm currently working in an architecture office together with uh, Thea and Anders, and we're called Rallar. What is parametric modeling? Uh, if I was uh, able to actually see you now, I would ask uh, you to raise your hands, all of you that uh, have been trying parametric modeling. So yeah, think for a while. Have you tried parametric modeling? Because I believe that every one of you listening to me have actually tried parametric modeling. This is parametric modeling. So instead of using a calculator, we use Excel when we make parametric models for calculations. So if we want the price of the apples, we can make a small, small calculation uh, using the cells, and then we get updated price when we change the kilos of, uh, of apples. This is also parametric modeling. So those of you who are architects or architecture, architecture students, if using ArchiCAD or Revit, then we are always using parametric models. So these windows that we can insert in uh, BIM models, they are actually quite advanced uh, parametric models. But the, the difference is that in this week, you're actually going to make these parametric models yourself. You're not just changing the parameters, but actually creating the system behind. So if we ask again, what is parametric modeling? Then we can say it is a system, uh, or you build a system uh, based on parameters and geometric relations. So just like the price, you make a system based on the parameter uh, kilo price and amount of kilos, and then you get the output price. So it shouldn't be that hard. If we go into geometric examples to say that we want to make this roof uh, with these beams, then we can make either a manual way uh, either digital manual or physical manual to make these uh, beams, or we could make a parametric model. If we want to add these beams in a parametric way, then we make a logic description of what would be the spacing. And then using the parameters of the geometry of the house. In the video, it looks like this. Um, again, on the right side, you will see the rhino window, and on the left side, you will see the grasshopper window. And if we zoom in, we have these parameters that could change the size of the house. 
the length of the house. And then we get the resulting beam distance. And here we say that we want it to be as close as possible to the number which is being changed now. And as you can see, it's it's real time, and that, and that's that's showing the power of of parametric modeling. You can real time change the geometry. But more importantly, what the hell do we need parametric modeling for? What is the problem? I think it's really important that you are now going to spend a week uh, doing parametric modeling, and you should constantly ask yourself, why are we doing this? Why are we using parametric modeling? And what is the problem? Uh, for me and for Alar, it's, it's, it could be simplifying this graph. Um, we have some budgeted hours to use, to spend, to make a design or to make a construction. And we could always simplify and divide it into robotic work or cat monkey work and the creative part. We do have a vision that if we could reduce the amount of robotic work, then we could either create better architecture or we could spend more money or maybe even a combination. Uh, but it's easy to make a graph like this, but how, how do we actually make it? Um, so for us, it's, it's actually then using parametric modeling to, to reduce the amount of robotic work. So what is parametric design? Is it the style? Is it a tool? Or is it the method? Or maybe is it everything? First, parametric design. Yes, it is the style. And uh, it's called parametricism. If we Google parametric design, we get all these fancy shapes. And you start to wonder, is this something that could be used outside architecture school? Is it something that could be used in a structural engineering firm? Could it be used in a architecture firm? Could it be used in I, uh, Norway? There's someone uh, talking to me about Twitch, but that's fine. Um, and parametricism, uh, they, it started somehow with at least these two persons, Saadid and Frank Gehry, and they pushed the boundaries of what was make, possible to make. So you have Frank making these extreme, extreme shapes, and then Saadid also, sorry about that, uh, making some erotic uh, shapes. Uh, further to Michael, uh, Michael Hansmeier, uh, making columns that would be impossible to draw manually. And if we zoom in, this is still a part of the column. It's, it's, it's crazy, but it is somehow parametric modeling and parametricism. And further to newer examples of Morpheus Hotel, which is completely made in Grasshopper, the tool that you will be using this week. And if we zoom in, we see that all the details, all the components are still made in Grasshopper. It's, it's crazy. So we can uh, agree on that parametric design as a style, but is it nice? If we go back in time to the 90s and uh, Google web pages from the 90s. Then we see these kind of uh, nice looking web pages. Or even better, accept Jesus forever for a given with this beautiful, beautiful background. Uh, and what this shows is that the same thing happened with this technology. We had to push the boundaries before we ended up with making uh, more refined uh, versions of the web pages. So we could say that the same thing might happen in parametric modeling now, that we are refining it to become a tool, not just a show-off. 
So the next, yeah, parametric design, it is also a tool. And important to notice is that we have different ways of uh, interfacing with this tool. On the left side, we have scripting, which is uh, writing line by line. Uh, and on the right side, we have uh, BIM, which is just using a software with a uh, proper interface. And in the middle, we have this graphic programming, which is the grasshopper part. Uh, the important aspect of this that is that scripting is relatively difficult and BIM is relatively easy. Further, we have that scripting is relatively flexible, while BIM is relatively uh, locked. The nice thing is the graphic programming. They have both the flexibility part, but also the part that it's relatively easy to start programming when using graphic programming. And here is where the revolution starts. And totally, yeah, it is a method. Um, uh, I especially like this part, that it's, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of thinking whether you have a software or not. It's a way of thinking when you create designs or architecture or structures or whatever. And then you might ask, how old is parametric design? If we see an example of this, then this is a perfect example of parametric design. Because if we see how this was made, it was made using hanging chains. So it was a perfect hanging chain model that were turned upside down to be a perfect compression model. So Gaudi didn't actually draw this. He 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 sim uh, he he made a a model that actually found its shape by the forces. So that's a way of doing parametric modeling. Further, we have uh, uh, structures like grid shell, where you bend the structure and then you see the shape uh, which is possible to to make. Or even Norwegian architects that say that they are pure manual in the way of thinking. But when they instruct their carpenter, they are actually giving quite nice parametric descriptions. So you can see that this, they are saying uh, with the poles not closer to each other than 0.6 meters and not further apart than 1.5 meters. This is a parametric description. So in, instead of giving them a precise drawing they are giving a parametric description so it's make so it's making it easier to actually adapt on the site where to put the pots and to the newer example uh, uh, from Shigeru Ba and uh, the peanut house which again are shapes that would be impossible to draw manually. And then Norwegian ex examples, uh, Helen and Hart. Uh, much of what Helen Hart is doing today uh, is sort of based on par of parametric modeling. You can see it's, it's, it's changing its geometry, but it's also uh, a repetition that is perfectly su suitable for parametric modeling. And again, Helen and Hart are making so beautiful uh, geometries. And then again, uh, Norwegian examples with these uh, small shells uh, in Gardenwood, they are they are okay, nice, but if you see them on the inside, they are super nice. So I don't know why they actually covered this uh, beautiful timber structure with uh, with this white uh, gypsum. It's so nice. 
So, um, parametric design, it is a method, and we can say that uh, the shape is a result of uh, logic, and logic is a result of hopefully a reasonable uh, decisions and the decisions are made by you as an architect or a structural engineer so we sometimes hear that uh, parametric design will will uh, remove our position as architects but i think it's actually the opposite that when we are actually using a tool which is this um, uh, powerful then we get more power than than before Part two, um, should we have like a small question round before watching? Maybe we can, if there are some questions, then we can discuss. Yeah, uh, so the people who have the question, they can raise their hand now. So uh, we will see uh, if somebody is uh, eager or on knowing something more. Since uh, early morning, then uh, you know people are not so <laughs> efficient. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I can continue. But, uh, so, so there are no questions. Everyone know everything from this. Uh, uh, if, if somebody have also a question, he can just uh, write it down on the um, chat box. So, ah, okay. uh, so let let's leave this option to everybody. But uh, yeah. Uh, Till now, yeah. good job, Jon. So nice. Uh, go into part two. Uh, it's nice to see that people are still here. <laughs> yeah, part two. Um, so un until now, we've been seeing uh, uh, um, just the introduction of par what parametric modeling is. Um, and the last part, then I will show you some examples that we have been made, been making in Rala. Uh, the first one is a part of the PhD, um, which uh, Martin uh, also was uh, a main part of, uh, which is the Orkla bridges. Uh, and they were the, the main case for both Ma me and Martin in the, in the PhD. Uh, and the second one is a bar in Trondheim, uh, and the last one is a church wall. Uh, and I think for all of these examples, um, for the mindset in general, I, I, it's important to to go through uh, the change of mindset that you hopefully will do during this week and maybe during the next year of. of of designing uh, when designing parametric uh, modeling. I think that we are going from designing this the structure to design the structure system. So from the structure to the structure system. And that's a way of changing your uh, your mind. So from structure one to structure two to structure tree, and we all see that there are some similarities, but when we design them, we were sort of not able to, to gain uh, the similarities. We still have to redo everything from, from structure to structure. While if we think that we have a structural system, then we can first make the structural system, and then we can generate different structures from this system. So a structural system generating structure one, structure two, structure three. Uh, and this is what we did with the Orkla bridges. So for this structural system, then we say that on the left side, we have a center line geometry. And on the right side, we have a final product. On the inside of this block, black box, we have that we have a structural analysis, we have detailing, we have uh, CAM instructions, and we have digital fabrication. If we change this uh, center line geometry, then the idea is that everything updates automatically, and then we get another product. 
then we have already made a structural system and then we get the new product. In our case, we we made these uh, steel plates with uh, slotted steel plates with uh, with dowels, which you can see in uh, in most glue lamp structures today. So we made the structure system for for this detail, and then we were able to just. Uh, Design and partly built first. We have a sketch a bridge with the system. So then we have the center lock. To, to detailing uh, and then to a finally detailed uh, bridge. Um, it looks detailed, but it's also, uh, more, more importantly, it's connected to uh, digital fabrication. So it was possible for the manufacturer to, to uh, uh, fabricate this based on uh, this one structure. And then to the hamburger cutting machine, which cutting, we're cutting all the parts based on, on this parametric model. So this ended up in being two bridges, Orkla uh, Follow and Avian Bridge, which had this type of uh, detailing system. Became some Lego parts which were pre-assembled, both the steel and the timber. And here you can see the, the final uh, result of uh, follow brew and of uh, Ambien brew. And then the ski jump, which is uh, actually in Trondheim, uh, Chivatna. You can see that they are so sort of in relative to to uh, Avian Brew, but they're still quite different, but using partly the same structural system. Uh, the second example will be uh, a bar. Uh, it's uh, called Architectness Hus. It opened, uh, I think, two, two, three, three months before Corona. So after Corona, then we will go back here and, and party. Uh, and structural engineers are also invited. Uh, so uh, Ralar uh, was asked to make a bar um, in this uh, bar. <laughs> This is the design. It looked it looks quite uh, quite simple. It's just three different uh, shapes uh, made out of flats. And you might wonder uh, why do we need parametric modeling for this kind of structure? It looks so it looks so easy. Um, and that's also the impression that we want to make that this is pure wood. It's just just three pure shapes of, of wood. But if we zoom into it, then we see, and then we can say that we use, we spent 10% of the time to decide how it looks like. And then we spent 90% of the time uh, designing how it's built, of what it is built, or and where it is built, and how to assemble this uh, structure. 
So if we zoom into it, then, well, some sketches, architectural sketches. Uh, we saw that we could uh, add them diagonally, uh, design different shapes, and then we ended up with this kind of uh, cross section. So it had a radius on both sides, and that made it possible to to stack them in different radiuses uh, without changing the lat itself. If we zoom into the structure, then we, we see that there, there were a quite advanced framing uh, on the backside of the structure. Which is uh, uh, a part with these uh, strange shapes and they were positioning the lats and also uh, being uh, made it possible to screw the lats to, to this shape. And as you might have guessed, this is a thing that would be almost impossible to, uh, to draw manually. But it also is an ice example that parametric design doesn't need to look like it is being designed parametrically. This is a thing which is perfectly hidden behind the main uh, architecture. But was extremely important to, to uh, be able to manufacture this. Uh, so this was pre-assembled, like Lego again. Uh, and the assembly part was quite easy because then we could just position it in this strange, strange shape uh, thing. And then the assembly part. Again, this uh, structure was also based on the center line geometry. So everything could be remodeled uh, based on the center line. And then you see on the right side, then there are being generated all the components that are digitally manufactured. Uh, almost real time. So, uh, last example. Do we have time for one more example, Martin? Uh, Martin is gone, so we can do another Martin? example while we wait for him. He's gone. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me, John? Can anyone hear me? Yes. I, oh, I was muting myself. Uh, could anyone hear me? <laughs> yes. Do you hear me, John? I, I hear you. Sorry, I was muting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can take another example. Marcin is out for a while, so uh, just continue. <laughs> It's so strange doing a lecture uh, just looking on my uh, at my, uh, my own screen. Uh, I don't even know if people are there, so <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, we'll we'll take a last example. Uh, this is a church. Uh, we did not design it ourselves. Uh, it's Pier Two, uh, which is a local architecture firm, and they came to us and asked uh, or said. We are fucked. We we don't know how to to make this. Uh, so then we help them with the transition from the architectural role to the manufacturing role. Uh, so it was designed by Olga Agapova and the uh, also the intern Hanna Lampalhalsen was part of this uh, design project. Um, so the concept is that. The whole church is, is made out of glass panels. And if you come closer, you will see that there are some patterns in the glass panel. And these patterns, they are uh, similar to the old church that burned down. And if we go even closer, we see that this pattern is actually made out of small, small circles. 
Here you can see it's made out of circles, which are, I think it was five millimeters on the whole, whole church, small, small circles. And then, of course, how we have a gap here. We have the architectural model, which is made out of sketches. And we need to turn these sketches into uh, extreme amount of small circles because they have to be turned into an illustrator file for each panel and then produced by a Ries beer glass. These were the sketches that, uh, that uh, the archi architect had. You can see that they, they have the pattern, but they are not made out of small circles. While this is what the uh, manufacturer needed, small uh, individual panels with circles in them. And some key numbers, uh, we have uh, eight facades. We have uh, eight numbering systems. We have 731 uh, plates. We have uh, 195,000 circles per plate, which makes it uh, uh, 142 millions of circles in total. The first uh, strategy they had was to use the, the intern, uh, and then she had to manually make these 831 plates in Illustrator uh, by opening it and then making them into dots or circles and then saving the Illustrator file. So this was approximately 20 minutes per plate, which uh, would end in at least a summer of uh, work, so no summer holiday on the practitioner. Um, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Is it this famous uh, example of using artificial intelligence to <laughs> to <laughs> to change the data? <laughs> um, uh, what is, uh, is it? Is it this example explaining how we are using artificial intelli intelligence in reality? Uh, to, I mean, this, to... this, <laughs> this is real intelligence. Uh, this is Hannah. She's she's not artificial. <laughs> uh, but it's it's pure parametric modeling, so no artificial intelligence. Uh, but we'll <laughs> we'll go through. Um, so. There had to be a better way of doing this, because if something changed, then she had to redo everything again, and then again, 277 hours of, of doing it. So the answer was to actually make a plugin, uh, which we could call Peer2 Archicad Upres Til Bilde Til Fargoverdi e Pixel Til Illustrator Script plugin, which is extremely uh, adapted for this one uh, problem. So if we go through the, the process again, then we, we started with this quite nice uh, uh, drawings of the patterns. And then we made a grasshopper script that, that imported uh, this uh, Archicad uh, files into Rhino and then into Grasshopper. The Grasshopper first part of the script, they were actually just generating many, many, many pictures, which was the size of the panels of the, uh, of the glass panels. And you can still see that it's just pure pattern, no circles in, in this. Uh, and also then giving a number system and the size of the plates in a, in a CSV file. Uh, the second part was to actually make a mini Photoshop uh, plugin, which sampled this image file and then turned it into a circle based on uh, the uh, darkness of the uh, picture. Uh, 
So the way it was done uh, was not anymore just Grasper, but also uh, scripting, which you will be doing in the last part of the week. So it was actually just checking each pixel uh, and asking what is the coordinate of this pixel and checking the brightness of this uh, pixel uh, through a loop system. So by this, it was possible to, to sample all pixels and then determine the size of the circle based on the darkness in this pixel. This was again uh, stored in the database uh, with each of the uh, picture of the of the circles, and then it turned into a script for uh, Illustrator that just says make circle, make circle, make circle, make circle, make circle, and then etc. etc. And then it says the coordinates and the uh, radius of the of the uh, circle. And by this, it was possible to then automatically generate a whole church just based on not so many lines of codes that ended into being these glass panels. And you might have seen that the moral of this uh, story is that it was no, not the sharks in the, in the ocean, it was a rhino. And rhino, it wasn't that dangerous after all. It was the result. So by that, I, in a nerdy way, I will say 1,000, 195,500 at the end, So thanks. If there are any questions, then I'm happy to to answer. Nah, I think there is no question soon for you, <laughs> or we will wait for a second more. But I, I think. Uh, yeah, you, you slipped uh, most of the people, probably. I have to oh, wake them up. Sorry about that. <laughs> <Hi>! <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, but it was a very good presentation, Jan. Uh, exactly. I didn't know you are so smart. Uh, for no, the, I for was, the last. Well, I was uh, cooperating uh, with Dr. Dobre, so okay. you gave it all. <laughs> okay. Um, Still no questions. So, Jon, thank you very much for the. Uh, if there will be some questions, I will re-forward it to you. So, so uh, maybe somebody will ask uh, later when they will be more uh, brave. Okay. Uh, then uh, I would just say good luck with this week. Uh, okay. You are uh, extremely lucky to have uh, Martin and his team uh, teaching you this. Uh, fantastic uh, software. So yeah, good luck. Bye bye. Yeah. So uh, guys, uh, we will start um, the Rhino, but uh, I think we will make uh, four minutes uh, of break uh, just because I have to set up the, the whole um, screen. Uh, so give me four minutes and we will meet at uh, 9.45. You can just uh, just uh, in four minutes, uh, I will turn on my camera and start the uh, start uh, first um, part of the workshop. So um, yeah, see you in four minutes.
Okay, I will share my screen. Let me just. Okay, uh, people, do you hear me? Raise your hand if everything is set it. And uh, generally, you should see my Rhino um, screen. So, yeah, you are there. Nobody is. Uh, I'm checking. Most of the people are reacting. Um, okay, uh, one, one thing about Mural uh, before I will start uh, the thing. If you are logging into Mural, um, <laughs> I make this, uh, or me and Sfera make uh, this um, because I, I, I see that some of you miss that uh, you have to join into parameter, uh, Parametric Workshop day one. So, so uh, here you will find uh, the explanation how to log in. Generally, here you have a brief description of what we will be doing. Later, here we have uh, distinguished on the parts with explain, uh, explain a explanation who is leading this. So, uh, first part of the day till 12, I will be leading. Then uh, Sfera will come to introduce you to the um, basics of uh, Grasshopper. And tomorrow we will continue with Grasshopper, but already from the second part of the day, we will introduce C Sharp. So uh, it will be quite uh, um, quick <laughs> um, because uh, right now we'll be introduced only right now to make us allow to preview things, to to show them uh, show model and um, work on it. So it's. We are not really teaching you correctly how to use Rhino. We just need to know some basic uh, features uh, of the Rhino. Um, here you have a little bit more detailed uh, description of the days. So if you are eager on only some parts of it, or you would like to uh, later when we will re record all workshop, you would like to come back to the um, recording and uh, see what was happening, then you can generally use this as a small shortcut uh, to to the um, interesting uh, parts of the movie. Uh, what happened here? It's a really detailed uh, description of the days. Uh, so day one, this is the whole column. Day two, day three, day four. As you can see with the next days, there is less uh, things which are described because this is a workshop. So I hope we will be uh, together put here uh things or thoughts or comments uh right now most of you i turn off the possibility to to edit because yesterday somebody just moved everything around so so, so i say maybe i give you too much freedom uh but um i think uh, when i will um uh, when we will uh, uh, work a little bit more I, there will be a parts of the day when i will just give you the permission to edit and you will be able to comment and so on um what is here this is a link to youtube which is explaining how generally to um, use uh, commands in rhino so since the workshop is very long and then uh I, it will be hard to you to come back in the movie uh, to, 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 to find the explanation. Here we introduce a small uh, explanations of the commands which we are using. So if you will have an, uh, a small task, which we, I will ask you at the end of this day uh, to, to make, you can generally come back to this command, to, uh, to this movie, to find uh, uh, the solution for doing the method. So this is not really exactly what we will be doing during the workshop because the workshop will be doing a more a bigger uh, project but this should explain you at least the basics uh, of the commands which we were using uh, in this part of the workshop uh, so most of the uh, movies are recorded i'm still uh, missing the visual studio i will uh, probably make them today afternoon but uh, also here you will find some brief uh, information about what I was explaining uh, during uh, the, the, the workshop. So right now you will see I will go into the Rhino and start to explain you. So here you will have the most uh, basic information which I wanted to explain you. Uh, let's go into the Rhino. I hope everybody have uh, managed to open the Rhino and they will try to follow me. Uh, the goal is, uh, okay, let's go back uh, to Mural and let's see. 
uh, Jan was quite uh, long, uh, so we have a 15 minutes Rhino introduction. This is what we will do. Then we have a 15 minutes break, but don't feel that it will be like this. So uh, it, it's a workshop. We don't know how really the progress will be going. So this is quite flexible. Uh, I think I will make right now like 15 minutes of explanation and I will give you a task. You will be able to, to work around or I will make it in 25 minutes. We will see. Mm, so let's go into the Rhino. And first of all, when you are opening the Rhino, uh, four, um, four views are appearing. Those are uh, viewports. Uh, the top uh, right, uh, it's... Uh, let me just... Uh, see one thing uh did everybody um i will just check uh, this thing raise your hand uh if you see my rhino 6 uh screen because this is for me yeah very good let's uh let's let's start um yeah uh <laughs> sorry one more uh, one more thing uh if we go into teams uh, and uh, generally in Teams, you should have something which is called Q&A workshop. Uh, here you will also find uh, information like the first and second mail with the links, also the link to Mural, also the question from guests. So active participants are able to to, to ask during the workshop. I prefer to make uh, a chat, to use chat and make the question here because this is easier to me to, to, to follow on the second screen. But also you can raise a hand and we will give you the uh, possibility to speak. Uh, the passive um, people, the passive listeners, if they have a questions, just place it here later when I will finish the answering on all the, the questions in the chat box uh, in the day when I will have a break. I will just take a look on your questions and try to answer you um, like individually. OK, now we can start. Uh, we have a viewport, um, four viewports per default. Some of you can have a different one. So let's make a perspective and uh, the, the most the, the, the basic one. So I will double left click on my mouse on the perspective. If I will double uh, click, uh, we will have the perspective uh, viewport, my general viewport. If I want to go back to my four viewports on the ribbon, which is here, I will click for viewports. So uh, this is, um, we can make the same with the top. I'm going into the top. This is, uh, uh, previewing and then I'm going to the top one. Now I will create an object. I will create an object, a box. So I am taking this box on the left uh, side of the screen and I'm going to the perspective view and making um, the box again. Uh, left mouse button on the box corner, left mouse button to approve the position, uh, another left mouse button to um, to to um, to approve again, and the third one is the height. So, if you want to orbit this object and this view, you are holding left mouse button on your uh, mouse, and if you want to move this view like a pan, you have to hold left shift and hold right mouse button. Uh, so, holding left shift and holding right mouse button will allow you to move the view. Uh, if you want to orbit, just um, right mouse button. Uh, it's a little bit different than it's in the other views. So perspective, it's kind of the indiv individual in this uh, case, because in the top view, if you hold right mouse, mouse, uh, right mouse button, you are just moving the view. There is no way to orbiting. So right mouse button is working differently in the perspective and in the top view. So uh, this is kind of the important. And now very important thing. Very often you are opening the file and you don't see the model because it's so tiny, so small, or it's moved somewhere outside. To make it visible in this perspective view, you have to go into zoom uh, options and you have two bot buttons which I really like. So zoom extends, which will fill the viewport uh, with your geometry, which you have. But one thing which I want to say here is that when you go over it, you have um, 
a small tag uh, which is showing you that you have two possibilities left mouse button and right mouse button and let's see left mouse button zoom extends and right mouse button uh, zoom extends to all viewports uh, so let's make it only in the perspective view i am opening the file i don't see the geometry so i am clicking left mouse button on zoom extends and it zoom in to my um to my viewport with the geometry i will now just uh, move the geometry outside of my screen in uh, all of the uh, all of the viewports if i am now in the perspective i am clicking on the with the left mouse button of the zoom extends it's just uh, zooming this viewport but i would like to have the geometry in all my viewports so according to the tip uh, right mouse button will solve the case so in this case we have all view uh, in all view viewports for viewports we have our geometry sometimes we have many geometries um, so and we would like to zoom to only one of them in this case we use zoom selected and uh, in, since we have only one geometry it will work almost the same right mouse button will zoom in all viewports uh, so this is very useful tool this is why i spent so much time uh, on explaining this because uh, when you will open the files which i am sending to you during this workshop very often maybe it will be moved maybe you will uh, move it by by by, um, by mistake and then uh, please, before sending me the information, there is nothing in the file. Just try to this to or uh, more zoom extends to to find the geometry. Uh, useful things: if you go into File and Properties, File Properties, you should have the properties of the Rhino again. File Properties. So, if I am here. I have generally the properties of uh, of my um, Rhino, so um, I can customize a little bit the software according to my needs. Uh, let's go into the uh, one thing which I really like, which is generally the uh, keyboard, and here we have a shortcuts. So whenever we are using some uh, commands quite often, we can generally customize it uh, by uh, writing here the command. So if I would like to, uh, with Control F6, I would like to create a line. I can make um, a command line after a dash line, and uh, since it's a uh, uh, English uh, command, uh, and I can click um, OK. Now, if I will uh, get Control F6, it will uh, take the, uh, it will create a line. So um, this is a useful thing. Another thing here, uh, which uh, is uh, very often um, used by us, it's uh, or, or you should know it. Here you have a small triangle and you have the options to change the visibility of your geometry. I created a box, by, but I don't see the walls of it. It looks like um, uh, eight, uh, sorry, not uh, 12 lines. I want to see the walls, so I should go into shaded. This will make uh, my geometry visible in the way it is. Um, another thing is uh, here that we have a properties of the object. Um, so it's um, quite useful to go into this property. If I click on the object, my type it's showing here. So closed extrusion, we will talk a little bit later about the geometry types, but here you can read it. You can change the layer on which it is. Per default, you should have a couple of layers. If you don't have, you can always create it by clicking new layer. It's working completely the same as AutoCAD, if you are familiar with it. So uh, those things are just exactly the same uh, as in AutoCAD. I can take it um, to the different layer, like layer number uh, one, and uh, now this object is on layer one. If I want to draw from the beginning on specific layer, I am double left clicking on the layer, uh, for example, layer zero three, and I will create um, another box so uh, this uh, is uh, our uh, so 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 later you can uh, 
uh, if you are in the default, I can turn off the layer zero three and it will not be visible. You can uh, hold with shift and mark uh, the layers so it's working as uh, the same for people who are familiar with AutoCAD, but most of the people are, this is working uh, the same. Um, yeah, from the important things, uh, the snapping, uh, it's very useful thing to know. Snapping, it's uh, when you are drawing something and you would like to connect with the existing uh, object, you should uh, have uh, the possibility to do it. So, first of all, here in the bottom uh, central part of the uh, of the uh, of the screen of the Rhino, you have a grid snap, ortho, planar, osnap, smart track, gumball, and uh, gumball, and uh, and all other things. I think the most important is to get to know ortho, osnap, and grid snap. These are the most uh, useful thing. Osnap, it's generally this one which is responsible for snapping your geometry. So if I will turn it off now when I am drawing, uh, you see it's going um, flexible. It cannot find the the edge of my boxes which were created so uh, it's also uh, yeah it cannot f uh, find it so uh, if i will go into the clicking on the osnap i also see that this is making gray when it's turned off and when i turn it on it's uh, it's turning on here i have different um, parameters or different uh, options to turn on and off and they are generally respond uh, uh, responsible for, uh, for 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 the features to which i can uh, snap so end of the object near point meet and uh, intersection i don't like to have a near turn on because it's making uh, small uh, bugs uh, during uh, drawing i like to have only and and uh, middle um, so but this is of course my choice and I can change it uh, um, change it uh, as far um, at any any moment also during the drawing but what I want to say also is that when we come back to the file and properties when I find the keyboard there is uh, f8 and f9 responsible for auto and snap and I don't really like to use the um, F directly F9 because it's also used for the Windows uh, settings. So I like to use Control plus uh, something in this uh, in this case Control F1 I will use. So I am Control C, Control V into Control F1, and now I will be just um, uh, I am just clicking Control F1, and you see that the grid snap is turning on and off. So uh, snapping to the grid, it's of course snapping to this grid, which is visible here. It's especially visible uh, during uh, drawing in the top. If I will now uh, create a polyline, so left click, you see that the, the Rhino is uh, giving you a tip. If you right uh, click with the right, uh, right mouse button, it will turn on drawing the line. I want to uh, draw the polyline, so I will just continue here. Uh, I create a shortcut, so I will just use it, but if you didn't, just click here, grid snap, and you see that it's snapping to the grid. So now I can draw a polyline. And snapping to the uh, to the grid. Uh, yeah, so so this is um, generally about the basic uh, settings of the Rhino. And the last thing which I want to explain in this uh, part uh, of the interface of the Rhino, it's uh, generally um, the C planes. So generally we are using. Um, local coordinate system and uh, global coordinate systems and it's very useful in the 3d uh, drawing to not only operate on the geometry but also operate on the sea planes uh, so let's create a, like, like per default it's of course the global zero 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 coordinate system let's make and uh, you, you you see that when i draw this um, polyline it it draw it uh, on the level of zero zero it's you you see that it's uh, flat i would like to draw the polyline on the top of my box 
so I will move the C plane. I will take it here, set C plane origin. Move it to the top of the box. And now the C plane has been moved. And now when I will be drawing a um, polyline. It should be on the. Um, so I have now two polylines. One is in the bottom and one is in the top. Uh, very often uh, we uh, would like to come back to the word uh, that the global C plane. So if I will type C plane in the command line, here is a command line uh, which you can use. And it's working exactly the, the same as the button. So there are two ways of uh, running the commands. If I go for the C plane, I can find the world um, world thing and I click on it and I can just take, uh, for example, the top uh, one. So now you see that uh, I have the world co coordinate system. So it's exactly the same as it was on the beginning when I was turning on the Rhino. Um, here, uh, maybe I should also say about this. When you go for one of the commands on the buttons, you very often have a small triangle here, but not in all, like uh, the cursor doesn't have it. But if you have it, if you open it, you have uh, more options. So if you, uh, for example, it's very useful here when you are creating a curve, if you open it, Per definition, when you are creating a control point curve, you have this one, which is um, the classic NURBS curve, when the points are outside of your curve. Uh, but very often people like to use interpolated version of this command. So it's called curve interpolate points. So when I am drawing this one, it's, uh, it's uh, giving us a different uh, curve. OK, but this is just to explain you that we have uh, options here. We will go into drawing a curves uh, in the next uh, part. So um, let's make uh, 10 minutes of break uh, or maybe just. Um, yeah, let, let's give 10 minutes of break for a coffee or something and we are coming back uh, with uh, drawing a curves and surfaces. If you have a comment or question, just um, give us uh, a tip or raise your hand. We will uh, answer you immediately. So uh, let's meet at uh, 10, uh, 20, let it be.
Okay, I am back. Uh, so we should continue. Let me see. Uh, can you raise the hand if you see my screen? I will know that. Uh, yeah. Very good. So we will continue with the first task uh, for today, which is creating a building in uh, Rhino. Mm, let's. Uh, I will just uh, come with the mural. So the task is to create a building like this. You will find it in the central part of the um, mural. So it's this one. Uh, and uh, um, it's already done. So <laughs> though, uh, like uh, you can download the file with this model, but let we will try to make it right now. So so um, but if you will not manage, you can generally download this file here. Uh, but uh, first of all, we'll create a grid uh, from lines, uh, organize objects on layers, then you use different views to move grid in the Z direction, then use loft, C planes, and uh, um, some Boolean commands to join cut elements. So um, it will not be the most efficient way to build this model, but it will be the most didactic, in my opinion, way to build this model. Uh, so those of you who are familiar with Rhino, they can be, um, they can of course do it by themselves uh, and uh, treat it just as a uh, case. But also, if you, if you are not, uh, if you don't want to do anything, can just listen. Later, you will be, you, you can use this model because later, when we will go into the grasshopper, we will be using this model to create uh, different uh, tasks. Uh, also, we will try to mimic a building of this model in a grasshopper in the second part of uh, today. Okay, uh, let's go into the Rhino. Uh, and uh, I will just clean my view. So I am marking everything from the left to the right. It's marking everything which I crossed from the uh, left to the right, sorry, from the right to the left, if you are crossing, it will, um, uh, the, the um, selecting zone, it's uh, catching everything, even if I am just crossing the objects. Uh, if I'm marking from the left to the right, I have to uh, mark everything inside my selecting box. So um, I just mark everything and just close it. Uh, we will be doing this part uh, in the centimeters. I like to design in centimeters. If, uh, if you open it in millimeters, you can change it here. Right click on centimeters, unit settings, and you can change it to the uh, uh, centimeters. So um, since I am using centimeters, I recommend most of you to make centimeters. So one more time here in the bottom, you have units, right click on it, unit settings, change it to centimeters. Uh, if you have centimeters, do not uh, do anything. And uh, since we'll be now just creating a grid uh, for the for the access system for our building. Let's um, go for the top view only. So double left click on the top and uh, let's uh, try to uh, to draw our uh, grid. Uh, if I zoom in, we have a building which have eight meters in this direction. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five um, divisions, three divisions of five meters in this direction. So um, let's create a line, polyline. I will start from this, from the zero, zero point and type the length. Uh, so it's um, 15, uh, 1,500 centimeters. And I am approving this. If you zoom, uh, zoom out, you see that the uh, the line has got 15 um, meters, uh, and I want to make it in ortho to not make uh, uh, any mistake in the angle. So I turn on uh, ortho by just clicking on it, left mouse button. I can turn it on and off during uh, uh, using command, and then I am approving the direction by just double left click on the mouse. 
he still wants to draw something, but I don't want him to draw, so I am just finishing it by clicking enter or space button. Uh, it's a little bit different than in uh, AutoCAD because then after one click you can just finish uh, drawing a line. Here you can you have to approve by clicking uh, enter. So we have the first line which is uh, having uh, 15 meters. We will now uh, make an uh, maybe offset. So I'm typing offset here. Uh, select curve to offset. I will mark this one. And here I will change the distance to 800. Now I can uh, offset it. I will just approve by space button. And uh, let me check just uh, how many of them. Uh, five of them. So I need to um, repeat this uh, command. So I can repeat it by just uh, clicking uh, space button. Uh, it will um, repeat the last used uh, command. So I will do it. Um, uh, I will repeat it five times. Uh, raise your hand if you have your uh, lines uh, drawn. Uh, those of you who are trying to follow. OK, some of you managed to do it. Um, if you have this done, uh, let's make uh, uh, horizontal uh, lines. So I'm using again the polyline, catching the bottom left corner and drawing one long one till the end. And again, I have to approve it by clicking enter or space button. Uh, I have my uh, line. Now uh, I need to offset it again uh, three times, but maybe this time to just not use offset uh, again, we will just copy it. So I am typing copy, select objects to copy, marking it from this point, this till the uh, end point of the line. Uh, if I would like to copy with specific um, translation uh, movement. I think I can still make it. So if I am starting copy here, I can type 500 and it will uh, and it will uh, make it. So uh, again, copy. Uh, sorry, copy from. And then uh, 500. Uh, oh, sorry, no, maybe it, uh, it will not uh, work so easily here. So let's go for the maybe the fastest will be again used to offset. And change the distance to 500. OK, so I have the basic grid. Mm, those of you who didn't uh, manage are trying to follow if uh, uh, they can just um, ask for help uh, by by s s sending uh, the comment wait or something or please repeat uh, but uh, those of you who have it raise your hand so i would like to see if somebody managed to make this grid Yeah, we have agreed. Uh, so uh, now we will go for the uh, for the next uh, objects uh, or for the next operation, which will be just moving it to the layer zero one. Uh, I will go and mark everything. Go for the properties uh, layer, and then change it to layer zero one. So now I have all my uh, grid on the layer zero one. And let's uh, take a look what we need more in Mural to draw our geometry. Um, so, um, oh, I didn't uh, make an annotation here, but here we have one meter of uh, spacing. And also I wanted to make uh, the uh, columns 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So we need the 20 centimeters of offset from the first grid to draw the uh, to draw the um, uh, floor. Uh, 
So let's make uh, a floor in Rhino. I will go for the layers, uh, change the layer zero to name by just one click on the left uh, mouse button or alternatively right click rename layer and I will name it floor. And now I will um, create my uh, floor boundary. So I will go for the, again, offset, distance 20 centimeters, distance in this side. Ah, sorry, I, we have to approve that we are on the specific layer. So I have to uh, click here to have this uh, mark um, uh, on the level of floor. Now when I will be creating the geometry, it will be automatically on my uh, floor uh, layer. So again, offset. 20. From this side, from this side. And I have to, uh, I want to have one meter from this side. So again, offset, distance, 100. Okay, uh, we have this one. We would like to connect those uh, lines. So we can do it in uh, two ways. Either use connect here on the left side, we have a fillet curves. So they will try to combine the, the, uh, the curves. We can uh, go for the connect. Either we can try to make a fillet with the radius of zero. I will go for the connect here and connect this line with this line. So. Repeat it, select the first curve, second curve, first curve, second curve. And uh, we have the boundary of the floor. Um, this is done. Um, so the next thing is to draw uh, the polyline here which will be 500 and 400 from the, this grid. So I will try to find this peak and connect it with the polyline. Uh, so um, I can just create a polyline, starting drawing from here and move it 400 direction. So I have a single line and then I am creating another polyline from this here to here. Uh, I will turn, uh, delete the elements which were not needed or move them into the uh, layer which I don't want to use. So I will go for the default which will be my um, layer which with the helping lines. So now if I don't want to see the helping lines I can just turn off the visibility of the default layer. Um, okay so I have this uh, triangular shape on the right side of my floor. Now we will create a NURBS curve on the, uh, on the bottom line. Uh, let's take a look how it should look like. Uh, so we have 100 centimeters, 50 centimeters and 150 from this, um, uh, from this uh, grid points. I will go uh, then and uh, create them 150 uh, and 150. So 100 from here, 50 from here and um, uh, 150 there. So I am grabbing this line 100 again to just to repeat 50. and 150. If you make a different numbers, it's also not so important. Uh, the geometry will be anyway uh, later parametrized. So um, I will turn off uh, or delete this line. We don't need it anymore. Uh, or I can just move it to the default. So if I am grabbing it here and take to the layer and go for the default, uh, I will not see it anymore. Now uh, I have those points to which I, uh, I, I would like to create a curve. And uh, this was uh, here short explanation. 
we have an herbs curve per default so i can draw uh let, let's make it here i will draw it here the herbs curve per default but i see it doesn't cross the points which i wanted to cross this is because this is um nerves curve per uh, per definition so generally the control points are outside of my uh, curve and uh, what is important this is a proper way to do it like if you want to have a really good uh, control of your curve this is the way how you should uh, do it unfortunately this is also the not so intuitive way to do it most of the people want to use interpolated version of this uh, curve so if we go for the uh, triangle here they choose the interpolate points i will take them and draw the curve and uh, to make uh, to see the difference i will again use the classic one with the nerves curve and you see how much different it is this one have um, is not crossing the points which I, I wanted to cross so some of you will think that it's uh, much more useful to use uh, this one but as you can see yeah one, one thing when you are um, touching the curve some of you already have the the control points which are turning on automatically some of you don't if you don't have this one you can turn it on here show object control points uh, so if you don't see it uh, you can um, you can uh, maybe, maybe I, I have it per default turn on but um, if it doesn't uh, you are not seeing control points you can turn it off uh, turn it on and off here by just left click um, and what you can see that even if you create uh, the interpolated curve the control points are still outside so you are not anymore uh, able to control the curve in the place which you created it because uh, this is generally how the nerves curves are uh, working and nerves curve it's uh, the most uh, um, I would say general description of the curve which we can find in the CAD software today uh so we have our geometry i will just take those small lines and move it to the helping lines to my uh, default and we have our boundary of the of the building of the floor already made um, now the last thing which i would like to do is to create a rectangular small columns or the, sec the, 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 the section of the columns. So I will go into layers and create uh, change layer 03 into column. And I will, tr uh, I will uh, draw uh, my columns. How to create, uh, create a rectangle? Of course, you can do it, it from the polyline by just uh, clicking uh, uh, 20, uh, approving, then again 20, approving uh, 20 and, uh, approving and finishing and i have a closed polyline alternatively we can use um, rectangle corner to corner uh, let's see what uh, other we have center corner let's try this one i will choose center and then um, corner or length let's uh, try uh, let's try 20 and uh, 20 let's check if they are the same uh, they are looking the same uh, let's make uh, and che uh, check what is the type so here we have a closed curve if i am clicking on the rectangle here we have also clo closed curve uh, what is uh, okay if i will mark the nerves curve which i drawn here we see that it's an open curve so automatically you can assume that when you are drawing a curve which uh, cannot uh, it, it's not closed it means that you cannot calculate the area of it and this is important because from the open curve you cannot create a surface directly when from the closed curve you can easily uh, create a surface uh, so I, I will delete uh, one of them and uh, what i will do i will just uh, copy this uh, curve uh, this uh, rectangle uh, three times up so i will type uh, copy 
grab the point and just uh, copy it three times. I will uh, mark those um, um, rectangles. If you want to, yeah, if you are grabbing, then you have to hold shift or control, sorry, shift to add a new uh, selection. So I select this one and then I am holding shift and grabbing three more. Uh, so I have um, those one which I wanted to have and I can now copy it uh, in the horizontal direction. I am finding the, um, uh, the end point and just uh, moving till the um, end of my um, grid. Uh, OK. So it seems like we have uh, all objects which we uh, which we could uh, create uh, in 2D, and we let me see if I could uh, explain something more here. We have a curves uh, here. We uh, we 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 make a small explanation how to use it. We explain how to use a polyline, and uh, it seems like we can generally go into the surfaces. But if you have any question here. Uh, let's make uh, four minutes uh, of uh, break. And if you have any comment, just uh, write on the chat directly to me or in the global chat. And uh, also you can, um, yeah, you can just raise your hand if you have any question here. So uh, let's make uh, three minutes of break. Let's come back on 45 and we'll continue with surfaces and B reps. But uh, I am still here available. So if you have questions, just. Uh,
it's okay. Uh, well. <laughs> no, it's good. Okay, uh, let's let let's continue. So uh, we have um, the model or the 2D flat model, which you want to move up. Uh, just to be sure, uh, raise your hand if you've seen my screen. Yeah, OK. Uh, so, um, so we have uh, this thing. Let's go into four viewports. So here I am clicking on the um, rebound standard and go for the four viewports. I have four viewports and what I was uh, saying in the previous part, let's go for the zoom extents at all viewports. But uh, so right mouse button uh, on this um, will zoom in to all uh, in all viewports. I will grab now uh, this um, thing or maybe let's just move the grid. So I will t uh, go for the layer 01, which I will maybe uh, name as uh, grid. And uh, I will go as an active layer here, turn off those two and uh, move it uh, up uh, with the distance of 300 centimeters, so three meters. So now I'm typing uh, copy and I am now in the front view. I'm grabbing one of the points and move it up by the distance of 300. I'm approving it and then the next floor will be 600. Uh, let me just check if uh, one more floor uh, we need to have uh, four. So again, I'm grabbing in this part and just copying up 300 centimeters up and we have our uh, thing also uh, as you can see when we are copying if you type copy mm, uh, then we have the options to use the vertical and uh, but since we are using the front view it will not be uh, issue with that it would be an issue with copying on the perspective view so if i would mark here he will generally try to be horizontal if i will not type uh, copy uh, vertical so copy if you are trying to copy it uh, vertically uh, in the perspective view you can have a problem until you will not uh, um, take it uh, as an yes Okay, so we have the grid uh, of uh, basic grid of our object. Um, and now we would like to create a surface responsible for our floor. And um, I will go for the layer 04 and turn off also the grid. And I will just show you some uh, methods for creating a surface. So first of all, uh, I will use the rectangle, draw a rectangle. And I will say I would like to know that this surface, uh, this closed curve, will be a surface. The easiest way to do it is here when we have the surface from three four corners. I will uh, see more options and I will choose surface from planar curves. I will type here and you see that already he created your uh, surface. If you don't see this as, a, uh, but maybe you see it like this. Uh, so, so please change here from wireframe to shaded or rendered or ghosted. In uh, all of this, you will uh, the, the the surface will be visible. Uh, the whole area will be visible. Uh, the wireframe will generally draw a line cross here. So uh, this will make it uh, maybe not so clean uh, when you are looking at it. Uh, but it's also the lightest format of showing geometry. So if you have a really big geometry in the 3D, uh, unfortunately, the wireframe will be much faster than uh, others. Uh, but right now we have just one surface, so, so uh, of course it will be as fast as uh, wireframe. So uh, this is the first um, 
first uh, way how to create a surface. Alternatively, we could use just directly surface from three, four corner points and, uh, for example, create a, uh, a surface like this. If I will go into properties and uh, click here, we see that we have a surface. If I click here, we see we have a surface. Generally, when we are using three point uh, surface or four point uh, surface, it will always create the classic surface per definition. Now let's try to create a more sophisticated shape, but not so much. I will go into top view, draw something which will have a little bit more difficult shape. So it's not four or three corners uh, shape, it's something with more. I don't care how you draw it, it can be similar, it can be, it just have to be, have more corners than the previous ones. And I will use the same option, which means surface from planar curves. Uh, and here, if I will click on this one, we see surface, here we see trimmed surface. It means that he was not able to create this surface from the theory of surfaces, from the NERBS theory of creating a surface. So um, this is in general, uh, like if you would go into description of this geometry, it, would, it will create a four uh, corner surface and trimmed this one here. Um, so this is uh, something which you uh, also it will be important a little bit later in the course that you know uh, how this is working. Uh, okay, let's go for the alternative way of uh, drawing uh, surface. Let's just create two lines in some distance from each other. I created three lines in some distance, let it be. And now I would like to loft this uh, the, the, um, through this. This should be the uh, sections of my surface. So I go here and I choose loft. And now the order how I am picking those lines is important. So I want to start from this, then I want to have this one, and then I want to have this one. I will approve it by clicking enter. And here I have some options. So I can use normal, loose, tight, straight sections and uniform. If I will go for the loose, you see that generally my surface is not exactly crossing the section which I draw. So it's not uh, very precise. If I will go for the normal, I see, if you don't see the change, um, no, but uh, all of you in Rhino 5, if you're using Rhino 5, you cannot see this change. You have probably the preview button, so you have to click on the preview button. But in Rhino 6, it should automatically uh, preview. So we can uh, see um, tight and normal should be close to each other, but tight it's uh, even more precise. It uh, it pushes the, but with such a simple geometry, such a simple loft, it will not be a big difference. And straight section, it's uh, making this uh, lofting um, very uh, sharp. Uh, let's go for the normal. So I see now this is kind of the precise way of uh, drawing surface and I will click OK. If I will click on it, uh, I again have a surface. Um, so he, the algorithm was able to create it as a surface per definition. He didn't have to trim anything. Um, and this is a nice thing because also when you are operating on the surfaces, uh, not trimmed surfaces, your operation time, it's a little bit lower. Uh, so every time you are using objects like this, a trimmed surface, probably when you, we, we, it will go for some cutting objects from this, it will take a little bit more time than uh, cutting from the object of type uh, of a clean type like surface. Okay, let's uh, let's delete it, what we draw, and let's go for the layers. Let's turn on the floor, and I will call layer zero for, uh, four, um, floor SRF. Now, what I will do, I will go on this um, uh, layer, so here should be the mark. I will uh, mark the whole uh, boundary, and I just 
go for the surface from planar curves. And I have my surface a floor, which I want to have, uh, which I wanted to have. But uh, since we don't want to work only on surfaces, but we want to work uh, today on the objects with the uh, with the volume, a uh, solid objects, which are called B rep uh in rhino so exactly the same as this box which i draw on the beginning we want to add some height on this um geometry and uh, now to do it we will use extrusion or extrude command i will go here and um, into this box and i will have extrude closed planar curve and i will have extrude surface Let's uh, let's try to extrude or let's try both and we will see what is the difference. I will um, turn off the floor or uh, floor surface. I will leave the floor surface and I will go for the extrude surface. Even here I have more options. So as you can see, we have uh, extrude surface, extrude surface uh, to point. Uh, we have extrude curve along um, uh, curve. We have extrude surface along curve. I will just go for the simple straight extrude surface. I will mark this surface and I will extrude. Uh, I will approve by clicking enter. Now I can type the height of this extrusion. I will stay with three zero, so 30 centimeters up. Uh, let's see if um, what we have here now if I'll mark from the left to the right go for properties I have closed solid poly surface um, it's very important to have it here written closed not open I will now go for the layers turn on floor and uh, go for this uh, layer and turn off floor surface. If we have this uh, floor surface, uh, sorry, the floor, and now I will use the second option to create my B rep. So I will go here and click extrude um, closed planar curve. I will grab this uh, floor uh, curve and I will extrude it uh, by 30 centimeters. I'll go for the properties and I have a closed extrusion. So I will turn off both. One we, uh, when I'm clicking now, I have two options to, um, to, to check. One is poly surface, one is extrusion. Let's uh, check poly surface. In properties, it's closed solid poly surface. If I am checking extrusion, I have closed extrusion. What is the difference? Uh, not a big one, but the uh, closed extrusion per definition, it's a little bit cleaner uh, description of the geometry. And um, when uh, when it comes to the operating on it, it will be a little bit faster than operating on the uh, alternative one, which is a closed solid poly surface. Because closed solid poly surface, it's uh, more like a join of uh, joining of the faces of our B-Rep. Now I'll grab this, move it uh, to the left side. They are looking exactly almost the same. Uh, they have different color, uh, but uh, per definition, they should be as uh, with the same precision uh, and uh, the same uh, volume. So if I uh, check here, if I will have a details, I can check, for example, the things uh, like uh, uh, the degree, but not uh, exactly what I was using. Uh, looking for, so we have 2096877. And if I will type volume again here, uh, I will have the same. So uh, I, I can roll it down to be sure that I'm using uh, uh, the same. Yeah, so it's exactly the same. Um, 
they are the same, but uh, like I was saying, here you will not see even these crosses because um, it's a little bit cleaner description of the geometry. Now, how to operate on this geometry? I will go now by double left clicking to perspective view. And now uh, very often you would like to see or use only the uh, the side of the BREP. To, to make it possible, you will need to explode it. So if I will click on the this closed poly surface, which I moved uh, to the left side, I will just click on the explode. And he wrote me explode a poly surface into seven surfaces. Now I can generally uh, deassemble the whole geometry into several parts. So um, yeah, and now important thing, although uh, I, I I make an explode uh, exp I use explode command, and when I am grabbing on it, I cannot uh, find the volume of the geometry, of course, because this is just the surfaces which uh, are touching it, each other, but the the software doesn't know that uh, it is a, a geometry, uh, a common geometry. So I will do the opposite of exploding, which is a joining. So here you have a join. If I will join it again, I have a closed solid poly surface, and uh, I will do exactly the same for the um, for the geometry which I made from extruding uh, closed uh, curve. So I will explode this geometry. You see, it created trimmed surfaces exactly the same as uh, uh, it was done before, and now I will join it again. And as you can see, again the small cross appear here which didn't uh, which haven't been here before so now when i'm clicking i don't have a closed extrusion anymore i have a closed solid poly surface so i lose some information which was making my geometry lighter uh, because now again this is exactly the same as this one closed solid surface uh, solid poly surface and uh, closed solid poly surface um so uh, so um, yeah, I can measure the volume. I have all the uh, possibility, but this geometry, the description of the geometry, it's a little bit more complicated. I will, uh, I will delete this one. I will leave only with uh, this one, and I will turn on the grid. And what I will do now, I will just go for the wireframe. I will click um, on this. Um, closed poly surface geometry and I will just copy it uh, four times up. So copy. I will stick to the grid, to the edge. One, two, three, four, or just three copies. One, two, three. And I have uh, floors in the correct position. Uh, okay, uh, so we have the floors. If you go into the shaded or uh, Arctic, Arctic, you will see them as the um, pureps. Uh, if any have anybody have got a question now, uh, I will just uh, wait a minute for questions. If you stuck at some part of creating it, uh, don't worry, we'll help you individually or um, not individually. And uh, let's go then no questions or maybe you are too shy to ask. Uh, it's not good to be too shy during the workshop. It's generally the workshop should be more interactive, but uh, I'm not such a big fan of talking to myself. Um, uh, let's uh, let's try to make a columns. Let's uh, try to make columns uh, in two ways. I will now turn off the floors. We don't need them. We will go into columns. I will turn off also the grid, uh, or maybe we'll leave the grid. I will go for the columns. Floor. Turn off all other. I can also lock them to not uh, change anything by by uh, mistake. So uh, 
I see small rectangles that are already drawn. So um, of course I don't need to have them to draw it uh, to, to, to make um, the B rep, but uh, very often we are starting the creating of the 3D geometry from 2D. Um, so the easiest way is to just use the box. So I have my column, I can pick two corners and go up almost till the end. So here I can even uh, grab just the position of one of the objects on the level which I want to have. So if I will change the view to the view, uh, four viewports, I see that I am generally very precise if I have a good uh, grid. Um, so I have the first column and let's check the property, closed extrusion, perfect. This is the um, the perfect uh, situation. It's very light format in the Rhino, closed extrusion, uh, but let's uh, make it uh, differently. Now I will just uh, surface from planar curves. I will mark three of them here. In each one of them, it's a separate uh, surface. Now I can just pick uh, again three of them and uh, here I will make, uh, sorry, it's here. Uh, I will go for the extrude uh, surface. I will go up uh, one more. I will control Z and then I will extrude surface up. Okay, uh, so uh, I have closed solid poly surface. Uh, a little bit worse than the closed extrusion, but still it's closed, so I can measure the volume. I can operate it uh, with the B rep, with uh, the uh, solid tools, which we will uh, go into in a second. And um, uh, last thing that we could do quite uh, fast, I can grab those uh, elements, also add this one, go for the extrude closed planar curves, move it uh, up and uh, here I have closed extrusion, perfect and uh, almost all my columns are done. Uh, let's go into the last uh, or the right side uh, columns and uh, let's um, use um, the third uh, uh, option, I will just grab this rectangle, I will copy it. Uh, so I'm grabbing it, typing copy. Going uh, up. OK, I have four of them. Uh, and now I will loft through them. So um here here and maybe the faster way okay here we can we have solid tools if i click on the ribbon solid tools i will have uh, more of those uh, options um maybe more direct here i can uh, since uh, i like to use uh, um, uh, either loft or idle extrusion so i can generally um uh, take uh, or sorry, uh, the loft will be in the surface tools. So surface tools, and here I have a loft. So I will grab this loft. So surface tools ribbon and loft. It's here. And now I will just grab those four uh, things, and uh, I will approve. I will type normal. I will click OK. And I did it, but uh, is it correct? I will look into it and unfortunately it's not really correct because it's empty inside and it has a straight, uh, not um, straight uh, elements. So I will control Z on it and see what other options I have. I have a loft, grabbing those uh, rectangles, approving enter and I will not use normal, I will use straight sections. Um, and I will choose closed loft. I will click OK. Let's uh, check now. Uh, it still didn't manage to 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 make it. So uh, with the lofting, we always have some issues. I will um, uh, I will Control Z on it. So so 
um, it will work a little bit better if I will explode the curve, which is a closed planar curve. I will uh, take uh, explode, or I will explode all of them. And I know that uh, I just, I know this is kind of the slow way of doing it. I could easily do extrusion, but I want all of you to know all the commands, which is uh, common to use the 3D um, modeling. So uh, I will now choose loft. I will go in the top view and I will just grab uh, those, um, this side. Uh, sorry, I will just I uh, maybe grab all of them. Let's see. This will not work. Uh, so I have to alternate. Uh, if I would like to do it with lofting, I have to do it on one side, then on the other side, then on the other side, and on the other side. Uh, so it's looking almost okay. I just don't have the cover on the bottom and the top. So I will just make it um, manually and uh, I have the top. I will change the wireframe to better catch the bottom. I will do it on the bottom and now when I am grabbing it, I have all my parts to uh, which um, are um needed to create a closed poly surface so i will just join it and i have a closed solid poly surface i know that it was looking uh really time demanding and not necessary but you will see later when you will be doing it with the grasshopper that it's a kind of the use also possible and fast way to do it maybe not in rhino but um uh, in uh, Grasshopper. Now I will do a little bit different uh, uh, last thing to create a B-Rep. So I will just take a rect one of the rectangles in the bottom and uh, create a straight line up. Um, I will maybe uh, here on the right side and it will be 900 meters, uh, centimeters uh, height. So I have this line, which is uh, vertical um, and it's uh, going up. Uh, probably some of you try to draw it in the perspective view and uh, the, the, um, the, the problem is that it's very hard to find the vertical direction uh, when you are drawing the, um, uh, the lines. So, um, uh, so, so, my suggestion is to go to the right or uh, front and draw this line here. Uh, so you can start drawing in the perspective view and then shift to the right or front uh, view. Okay, now let's try to make the um, uh, lofting of the curve according the line. So extrude curve along curve seems to be uh, what I was looking for. So select curve to extrude. This is my rectangle select path curve near start i will choose this one and it created my closed solid poly surface unfortunately it's not a closed uh, extrusion as it was here but anyway it's already a closed solid poly surface um i was using uh, this one extrude curve along curve but we could use also extrude closed planar curve uh so sorry extrude uh, yeah um I, I was using this one and uh, the the good uh, thing about this is that it can uh, work only also on the nerves curves um okay i will just grab last two and extrude it up so extrude uh, close the planar curve and move it Till the top. Uh, so I have all of the columns. I have also my floors. But the issue is that generally um, they are crossing each other. So these elements 
are generally crossing through the floors, which I would like not to have. I would like uh, those geometries to be separated on the thickness of the floor. Uh, in the top, as far as I can see, since we were extruding up, we don't have this issue. The problem was here. How to solve it? Uh, one thing is that we could, uh, and here we can, of course, operate on the uh, on the um, on this BREP and uh, move it up. To to make it, we will go into solid tools, and here we should find something which is called uh, extrude uh, or move phase. We can try to to use. I will just um, I will just block the floor so it will be visi uh, mm, visible but uh, now it cannot be um, changed i will turn off the grids to have only on my objects uh, the things which are important to me and now i would like to uh, extrude maybe a face i will pick and uh, uh, oh, let me see i will choose maybe one of those uh, I will go for the. Oh, I will turn off. Um, yeah, if you have a problem with rotating the geometry, generally the nice thing is to use the thing which I was talking on the beginning. So zoom selected. If I will uh, right click, it will zoom selected on all. Now the orbiting. If you are doing orbiting, it's orbiting only to this element. So it's much easier to find, for example, the the bottom of this column. Uh, if I will now go for the solid uh, tools and I will uh, go for the extrude face, I can grab this face and I can move it uh, up. Either I can move it down. So it could be a solution here. If I turn off the faces, I can now uh, generally uh, move it uh, here. So this one, although, um, yeah. This one is already shorter than the another ones, but uh, doing this one uh, uh, manually for all of the objects will be kind of the again not so effective, or not effective, but um, it will just take a lot of time. So let's try the other option, and also this is an option which will be useful later in the grasshopper, which is generally a boolean um, operations in our solid tools uh, ribbon so what i would like now to do is generally to create a boolean difference um, and i would like to subtract my floors from my um, columns so i'm grabbing all the columns i am approving then i am grabbing uh, the floor i have to turn it on on the lock and uh, i can now uh, extrude so you see that um, the problem is, yeah, I will control Z because uh, I was too fast in uh, showing it this. I go for Boolean difference. I grab the columns. I approve it uh, by clicking enter. Delete input. No, we don't want to delete uh, uh, the input. And uh, now I will uh, grab the um, the, um, the floor. So uh, now you see we have our, uh, we don't see the columns on the level of uh, zero, which were here before. We will do the same for this one here. So again, solid difference, grabbing the columns. Uh, the input, remember to have null. Now I am grabbing two floors here and clicking uh, enter. And you see, I don't see the columns driving through. Now, what is this object? Uh, closed solid, po uh, solid poly surface, closed solid poly surface. All of the objects, even if they were closed extrusion, now they are closed uh, solid poly surface. Uh, what's more, I think uh, somewhere uh yeah but no it's 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 done this is the geometry which we wanted to to make uh, so so uh we we finished the almost perfectly in time because this part should be till 11:30 now we will have a half hour of break
and we'll go uh, come back at 12. But before we will go, um, one thing. Alternatively to making a Boolean difference, we can make a Boolean union. So if you would like to have uh, uh, all this model as a one thing, so I will just copy it. Now I have two buildings and this one I will just uh, union. It is uh, sometimes time, time demanding with the more complicated, but now I have the whole geometry as a one B rep. Now, if I would like, for example, to check the volume, I will have the volume of the whole uh, um, geometry. Uh, and it's very important to operate on the, the lightest version of the extrusion and stuff like this. Uh, so closed solid polysurface, it's not always the best and the lightest format. We should always try to make it as a closed extrusion or a closed uh, B-Rep. Uh, because it will be uh, much lighter to make an operations like a booleans, cutting and splitting. Yeah, one thing uh, which I will work now, uh, I will show you just uh, in case uh, that uh, you know that this command is existing. It's uh, generally, uh, oh, yeah, one thing, if I will now explode this thing, so if I will explode it, now you see that I generally lose uh, uh, the, 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 the integrity of it. So now I just have um, the single um, poly surfaces and also even the floors are not anymore continuous. They have the holes for the columns. So you have to remember that every time you are doing a Boolean operation, you maybe will lose some information because uh, right now the oh, or it's up to you if you are losing or is it the information which you really need because sometimes maybe you would like to have the position of the columns from your volume um, object so if you are doing inverse um, uh, modeling like you have the volume geometry and you would like to create a 2d drawing maybe it's uh, to be honest a good operation to first make a union and then explode it because then you will have a uh, quite nice um, uh, description of the floor. So now if I will move it here, I have all the columns and if I will explode a poly surface again, uh, I should have, uh, let me see if it, uh, oh yeah, Maybe we will show it uh, after the block in Grasshopper, but we are able to have the curves, uh, curves from this uh, surface. It's um, mm, rebuilt edges, but there should be. Uh, I am not a specialist in Rhino, but uh, there is an option to 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 get those curves uh, quite fast. I will find it and show you after the break. Um, last thing is the splitting, which I want to show you. Uh, it's um, splitting. It's very useful when you would like to create uh, sections. Um, let's uh, go into standard and uh, then we should have um, either we can split on the object uh, I will uh, I explode it I will join it again so this is a closed solid poly surface one common and now I will uh, set um, C plane C plane um, with the elevation maybe so I will Go from this side. Uh, sorry, without elevation, but uh, set planes a C plane to the object. I will go for this one. Set C plane. Yeah, and I'm grabbing here. So um, now you see that the C plane. It's according to the edge of my um, of my building. Uh, if I will start to draw a line, 
let's uh, draw a line. I can snap uh, if the grid snap is turned on. I can generally snap to this one and uh, make some uh, uh, some line. Uh, alternatively, I can make a surface. So if I would like to make a surface uh, right now, I will create a surface which is um, which is um, vertical and uh, exactly aligned to the edge of the of the building. I will now move it. So I will type move. I will grab the end of the column and go till the mid. So uh, it should be now that the part of the building it's uh, on this side, part of the this side. And now I can split. So uh, I will go for the split. Select objects to split. I will split uh, the building and cutting object is my surface. And uh, now you see that generally everything on the side was splitted. So uh, yeah, I can just. So again, this uh, this operation, maybe it's not, oh, is it kind of the useful when you're operating on surfaces as in Rhino, but uh, it will make a different meaning in when you will be doing uh, it with the grasshopper because it will be very easy to create a sections on the specific uh, dimension of the building. Okay, uh, let's make a break. We are coming back at uh, 12. Sfera will continue. Oh, sorry, tw uh, 12. Uh, let's uh, check if it's 12.30 or um, sorry, what, when do we want to start? But let's make one hour of break. Let's uh, because uh, then let's come back at 12, uh, half past uh, 12. And uh, we will uh, we will start uh, Grasshopper. So uh, basic of the Grasshopper will start at 12, half past 12. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, just uh, let us know. We are here to help you. So, uh, if again, if some of you want to use the file, uh, please go here. Uh, you should uh, be able to to to, to download it. Uh, let me check if it should, it should be working. Um, if if you have problems with uh, getting to this file, let me know. Just one of you, you, you can chat me privately if you are, uh, uh, but uh, it should be by clicking here open. Uh, you should be. Uh, OK, can you show the, the Boolean difference uh, again? Yeah, of course. Uh, no problem at all. So uh, I will make it maybe on a more classic example. Uh, I will create some kind of the um, objects. Uh, they are um, touching each other. So uh, I have two objects. And now let's make a Boolean operation on it. I go for the solid tools. Pick up Boolean difference. Select surface uh, to subtract from. So the first one which I want to pick is this one, which um, it's this one from which I want to subtract. So uh, let's say that uh, this is a floor, this is a wall. So let's subtract, the, the floor should stay as a continuous. So I want to subtract um, the um, geometry from the wall. So I will pick up wall on the beginning and remember here is delete uh, input by default. I think it's yes, I want to have it no. So I am clicking until it's no. Uh, then I am picking up the second uh, object, uh, so the, the the floor, and now this object, it's uh, it's uh, already um, the uh, the um, um, subtracted. So now you can see it like here. Uh, 
So, um, yeah, I see you catch it. So, but yeah, thanks for the question. <laughs> At least somebody is listening to. <laughs> um, so, 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 uh, yeah. If you want me to to repeat something again at any stage, just uh, really feel free to 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 ask. Okay, uh, I will turn off the video and mute the mic. But if you have any questions, still, just uh, feel free to comment or uh, write to me privately on the chat if you if you don't want to make a global comment. But seriously, don't be shy. There is no stupid questions. So, uh, yeah. There are stupid questions, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we will not uh, show you that uh, you are asking a stupid question. Uh, yeah, so so uh, let's come back at 12, uh, half past 12. Or you can comment it.
OK, so I think we're ready to start again. Uh, if you can hear me, please raise your hand and uh, I'll begin. Hey, great. So my name is Sverre Håkonsen and I'm a PhD student here at the Conceptual Design Group at NTNU and I will be doing the second part of day one together with you. So today uh, you can start by opening uh, Rhino together with me and we will do mostly what Marcin has been doing before lunch, uh, but this time we'll do it in Grasshopper. So if you have Rhino opened, there are two ways that you can launch Grasshopper. The first one is in the standard tab here at the top menu. You will have a launch uh, Grasshopper button, at least if you're using a Rhino 6 or newer version, so you can press that. And then we'll have the Grasshopper opening here. Or another option, which the guys using Rhino 5 might have to use. If you go to the command line at the top here, you can just type grasshopper and press enter, and then you will have it. So before we start, I'll just show you how you can uh, change the setting so that you, every time you launch a no grasshopper will open with it, which can be useful as most of you probably will use it together. So if you go into the tool uh, drop down menu here, and options at the bottom. You will find a general tab here. I'll just give you a second for that. So once again, the tools. And the bottom you have options. And there you have a general. So here you can see you will have a command list where you can enter some commands that Rhino will run every time you launch it. So if you enter Grasshopper here, and just press OK. Then every time you launch Rhino, Grasshopper will start along with it. So if you have done that, you don't have to, but you can if you want. We can start Grasshopper. And uh, you can either have it in full screen, but I'll just take the perspective here as it's the top. And now and then I will use Grasshopper for approximately half of the screen so that we can see what is happening. So if everybody has opened it, uh, we can start by looking here at the empty space there, which is what is called the canvas. And this is where we will do also for coding, creating our algorithms. At the top, you have something called a component palette, which you can see is divided into categories by their function. And uh, this is where all the components that you will use are stored. So for the params, you have some geometry containers, you have some primitive containers, you have some input, you have some different maths sets, and we will not be able to go through all of them, but uh, you can find everything here. And in addition, there is possible to download and create your own components, which you will see later on Thursday. Uh, and they will appear here as well. So we can start by going into the params uh, menu here, and you can just Press, there's a small drop down symbol here. So if you press that, you can see all the geometry types that are both in Rhino and Grasshopper. And right now, we'll just go for a point. And you can press the point and just one, one time with the left mouse button, and it will be here. And you just press it once again, to place it in the canvas. And right now, you will see that is shining orange, and that is because it doesn't have any information stored to it yet. And then these kind of black components here are what is called containers. So you can see there is no input or it's not doing anything. It's just storing information about points uh, for this one. If it's the first time you use Grasshopper, you might see uh, it's just uh, a text or something. So you can go to the play option here at the top. And if you press draw icons, you can change the display option here. So I prefer to use the icons since it's consistent with uh, uh, icons in the color component palette. Uh, you can also share. So you can also change to only draw the short names of it, full names. So it's up to you what you prefer. But I will use the draw icons to keep it consistent, so you, so that you can find it back here. And I will just use an external component called bifocals which displays the name of the component so that you can follow what i'm doing 
So you probably won't have this component if you never used uh, Grasshopper before, but in the Q&A in the Teams channel, I will post a description of how to download it after the course today. So I think we can begin uh, by showing how you how to create some basic uh, Grasshopper geometry. So one way of doing it, which is linked to Rhino, which you used before the lunch, if you create some geometry in Rhino, let's start with just a single point in the top here. A single point, and you can press it, just place it anywhere on your canvas. And then you will go back into Grasshopper. And if you now right click your point container component, you will see that you have an option here to set one point. So if you press that, you will be directed into the Rhino environment. If I now select my point, this will turn gray, light gray, meaning that it's displaying in Grasshopper and Rhino, and it's containing some data. So if I hover over it now with my mouse button, you can see that it contains one reference point, which is this point. And if I, if, if I pressed it, it will show green, the crosshair, and if I don't press it, it will just display as a red cross. So when a point is referenced through Rhino, it will, be, uh, it will be dependent on the Rhino point. So if I now change the location of this point in Rhino, the grasshopper point will follow. So if you want to take input from Rhino and work on it in grasshopper, the referencing and is one way to do it. Another option is to create everything inside Grasshopper. So if you again go to the parents uh, category on the component palette and you go to the input folder here, you have something called a panel. So if you select that, press the left mouse button once and place it on canvas by pressing the left mouse button again, we'll have a panel component here. In this panel component, you can use it both for for displaying information which is stored inside a component. So to connect two components, you just press the left mouse button and you will get an arrow like this, and you just drag it to the left side of a new component. And in Grasshopper, you're always walking from left to right, meaning that the component on the left side will operate before sending information to its right to the next. So here I can see information about the reference point here. And I can always use a panel if I select a new one and drag it to the canvas. I can use it to create information. So we can create a point inside a panel. So if I double click, you can create a point by typing in some curly brackets. And then you will enter three coordinates. So for now, just make it zero, zero, zero and press anywhere outside the panel, and you can see this. So if I go to the geometry again, select a new point, place it here. It's orange, so it doesn't contain any data. And then I drag the panel component here into it, and you now see in Rhino that we have a point in the origo. And whereas for this one, which I created in Rhino, I can change this and run a point, a uh, grasshopper point will follow. But when it's created inside grasshopper, there's nothing I can do with it here. In Rhino, it's just a preview here. Um, there are other ways of creating points as well, which you can take a quick look at. So instead of going through the component palette every time you want to find a component, you can just double click in your canvas, or you can press the space bar and you can start searching for it. So if you now type in X, Y, C, we'll find a component named construct point. So if you press that, we'll get the component here. And this one is doing exactly the same as just typing uh, the text in the panel here. But instead it takes three input components and it calculates a point which it returns. So instead of typing text in panels, we can also use something called a slider. So we can take that from here the first time. So in the input at the top, you will find a number slider. So just press that and drag it into the canvas. So just to compare to show you how easy it is, 
Oh, if I want to change the value, I have to double click, enter, go out again, and one more time every time I want to change. But with these sliders, you can just drag up and down and it will change the value. So if I input this now to the X and Y and C component, I will know I have a point in the same location as this one. So both are in zero, zero, zero. But if I change the slider now, I'm changing the location of the point. And you can see both the X, Y and C direction. And uh, you can change the values of this slider. If you double click it right now, it goes from zero to one by default with the three digits of position. If you double click on the name of the slider, you have uh, real numbers, <coughs> sorry. And you can change the number of positions here by the slider. So maybe one for now. You can also select just natural numbers without decimals. You can select even numbers or even odd numbers. So it's up to you. But for now, just keep it at real and with the one dig decimal of precision. And you see here the domain of it. If we double click the minimum, we can set that to 0, 0.0. So press enter. The maximum can be 10. And then you have a range here. And you could also change the value of the slider in here. If we enter that now, a slider is going from 0 to 10, so we have a bigger domain to work on. And you can, of course, copy this one by selecting it, Control C, Control V. Do that one more time and input it into the different ones here. I have three sliders, which is independently changing the X, Y, and C coordinate of this point. So then I can work with it like this. So I'll just give you five minutes so that you can try for yourself to create, try to create three more points. Uh, something like this, if we have X, Y coordinate system. Try to create three points like this or something, and we will use that for later. So I'll give you, if there's no questions, I will just give you five minutes to do that, and then we will continue. I see there are some questions, so we'll just answer the first one first from Talia. Um, <clears throat> where did you find the construct point XYC box? And there's two ways of doing that. Uh, you can either do uh, search for it, XYC. And if you don't know where it is, if you press Control Alt, you will see that you have a small information symbol coming up next to your mouse. And if you press the component, you can see that on top there in the component palette, it will show you the direction of it. So it's in vector points and you have a construct point here. So that is a nice way to find components if you can't do it. And uh, the second question is, could you scroll in on the params? Um, do you want to zoom on it? Is it too small or?
Okay, I think we'll continue. So if you have three points now, if you haven't made them, you can just, like in Rhino, you can go from left to right, or you can go from right to left. Copy, Control C, Control V twice, and you will have three points with three sliders, and you can adjust those. So before I continue, I will just mark these and right click on the canvas, and you will have a preview of option here. So you won't be able to see them anymore, which can be nice if there's too much information. So I now have three points, and we have seen that you can create points either by referencing them in the Rhino. You can use just the text, or you can construct a point with three sliders. So next thing we will do is we will try to create some simple lines. So if you go to the params again, and you have a curve category here. So if you go into that and the primitive ones, uh, subcategory there, in the top right corner, you will find a line component. So just place that on your canvas. And you can see that it takes two inputs, a start point and an end point. So just take two of the points that you created. One is a start point and one is the end point, And you will get a line which is green here. And again, since we just connected it to parametric points, you can change the sliders and play around with it. And the shape of the line will also follow. So that is kind of a first short algorithm, parametric algorithm for creating lines. So that is the simple or most simple line that you can make. You can also try to make a polyline. So again, curve, primitive, or sorry, spline this time. And here you have polyline. So drag that to the canvas, or again, just search for it. And select the polyline. And this time you can see that it's just not a point, but the vertices, which is a list of points. So to create a polyline, you need at least two points, and you can create more as well. So if we now search for a point container again, which is this one. Place that on the canvas, and we want to place all these three points into here. So to do that, we start with the first one. Just press the left mouse button and drag it onto here. Go to the second one, and this time you have to hold shift button as well. And you can see next to your mouse, there will be a small plus symbol. So just drag it to the same component. and and repeat that for the third one. And if I now take a panel, see what's going on inside here, you can see that we have three points. And if I change the parameters, of one of the points, you can see it changes here as well. So we can now input that into the polyline here. And you can see that we have a polyline between these three points. And the polyline is just a collection of straight line seg segments joined together. So everything is linear with the degree of one. And then just hide this again. So that is the polyline. And if you can, of course, add more lines if you want to. Let's make it up here. Just to drag it, hold shift into that. And you can see that we add another point to the polyline. And you have another input here named closed. And this is a Boolean. So it's either true or false. And by default, it's false. So if you search for a component called Boolean toggle here, select that. We can input it. And if you double click this now, this is a button that will go to true. And the polyline component will then close the line, meaning that to connect the last and first point as well. So you get a close line, which can be useful if you want to make close curves, for instance. So if I disconnect the final point again, and instead of holding shift, I now hold the control button and you can see a minus sign next to the mouse. Go back to the final point, remove that. I have a closed line here and a polar line curve. So the final line that we will create is the interpolate, which Marcin was using 
earlier, which is a NURBS curve, which is going through all the input points that you make. So again, we have a collection of three points there. Just input that. And I'll highlight the first one here. And you now have a poly curve, or sorry, an interpolated nerves curve going through the three points there. And here we have some input. You can change the degree of the curve. Uh, when we just have three points, you don't need that. But if you have a really curved, a uh, really curved uh, curve with a lot of kinks, you might need a higher degree. So you can either input that as a number. So Another shortcut for you here, instead of writing panel, if you just go for uh, shift and two as a quotation mark, you will see a panel symbol here. So everything I type after this will just be the input of the panel. So if I just write one now and press enter, I have panel with one. So if I enter this here to the degree of the curve, you will see that we get a polyline, with, which is a linear. Of NURBS curve. And you can change that to three, and you have to have odd numbers here for five, which gives it a higher degree. So you can, we will probably use this later if we have time, but for now, we can just leave it as default. We have a periodic here, which is again a Boolean, so you can either input it from here, making a periodic going back, or you can also change that by right clicking on input. We have a set boolean here and you can change the input here. And the nut style is some nerve theory, which we won't go into here. So you can just leave it at the core spacing, which is fine for now. So is everybody following or are there any questions so far? Okay, so we can take a break then. Uh, just a final thing before we leave. Uh, as I said, when we create geometry inside Grasshopper, everything will just preview in Rhino, but you can't do anything with it. So if you want to export it to Rhino, you have to go for this curve, for instance. You have to right click on it and have you have something called Bake, which is just the Rhino name for exporting it. So if you press that, I only have one layer, press that, press OK. And as you can see, I now have a curve in Rhino. And this is completely independent. So if I change anything on the Rhino curve, the uh, Grasshopper curve, I'm sorry, the Rhino curve will still be the same. So I can bake a new one now after changing it, which have, will have the shape of the latest Grasshopper definitions. So these are now individual Rhino curves. You can do whatever you want with it, or you can delete it. So I see there's a question. Yeah, the, that's by default. Yeah, if you go into display at the top fan, you have the draw icons, and you have an uh, option to draw full names. So if you select that, it will draw the full names. So in the beginning, at least, I think it's nice to use the full names. And after a while, you will probably be so familiar with it that you don't need it. But for now, I think you should keep it as full names. So. Did you find it? Yeah, great. Uh, any more questions? No, Marcin answered one. I see. OK, so we used 30 minutes almost, so let's take five minutes. You can try to work around with it. Maybe we can try to add, if you want to, you can add an extra point to the, to the interpolate here, making it go something like this. And if you're able to do that, 
take five minutes and we will meet again. One minute past. Uh, one minute past one. Okay, we'll continue. Um, so before we create a new file, you can just save this one if you want to. And to do that, go to the top left corner of your Grasshopper file and you can just save the document. Um, I will upload it on uh, Mural afterwards, so you don't need it. But if you want to try to do it, you can do that. And um, 
when you've done that, you can open a new document and we will start on drawing some simple circles and rectangles, which we will use later. So I'm assuming you're ready. So let's start with a simple circle. So this is kind of a curve, so you will find it in the curve component category here. And in primitive, you will find a circle. So just place that in the canvas. So you can see this have two inputs, and the first one is a plane, and the second is a number or a radius. So if I go back 